They gave their life to that belief that that would be the case. And you could say to them, well, why do you believe like that? None of it's come about. Show me the proof of it. Why are you so fervently believing in all these social and political systems when you can't even show me anywhere where it's been working? And yet you reject God. You reject Him who has promised you a better life if you follow Him, both in this world and in the life after the grave. And not only that, He has proven that by His own resurrection and the resurrection of others and the appearance of numerous saints, angelic hosts and all these others. And still I don't believe. You see... If you are shown these great things, these great mysteries from God, from the Holy Fathers, from the Holy Mothers and the Saints, and then you do nothing about it, then it's a condemnation upon your own soul. You say to yourself or to others, if only I would see some miracle, I would believe. If only I would see some something godly, I would believe. And then it happens to you, but nothing changes. You don't change your life. Your belief doesn't increase in any way whatsoever. And after a few days, you've forgotten the whole thing. And that's a, con a condemnation upon yourselves because you asked for a sign, you got the sign, and you did nothing about it. Therefore, God in His whole mercy does not give these signs that easily to people just willy-nilly because it's a condemnation to them knowing that they will not be persuaded to increase their faith and follow the ways of Christ. People who do not read the Gospels, of course, don't get that whole point. They think they know what's written there, but they don't. All their answers are here, if only they would search them out. And all these sorts of things that they strive for in the world for that for the love, for the peace, for the pleasures and that. They strive after in different ways, but they never achieve them. And still they strive after them again and again and again. Never achieving them, going through sickness, going through sorrows, going through torments of various ways. And still they say, I don't believe in God. They even blame him. They said, if God exists, why does he allow such horrors in the world? Why? Well, you know, one of the things that people pray about and, and strive after is freedom. Total freedom. And God gives us total freedom. He's answered your prayer. You want total freedom? You have it. Total freedom. What does this total freedom lead to? Wars, killings, horrors, suffering, sicknesses, all those sorts of things. It's the result of... God's mercy giving us total freedom. It's if he, if he says, okay, you want to rule the world, you want to be able to um, be king of your own life and do your own thing, go ahead. See what it leads to. I will not get involved. I will not um, stop bad things happening. You create the bad things, you stop them. And of course they can't. You see... So again, we have this situation that they blame God when in fact He's given them total freedom to pursue any part in life that they would like. And the way they pursue leads only to wars and sufferings, to death, to sorrows, to all these sorts of things in the world. Why, why do they think that our Lord is just going to come there and stop their ugly ways? That's not what he's about. He came into the world to show mankind the kingdom of heaven, but in order to reach that kingdom of heaven, through their freedom, they have to change their own ways in life. They have to stop doing evil in its many forms, numerous forms. They have to stop doing that. If they stop doing that, then God's grace and mercy comes, and then things will start to be put in order. But because the world does not want this, it rejects it, we have the opposite. We have a sort of a hellish existence. And we have had a hellish existence for centuries and centuries since mankind fell. 
It's through the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that he came into the world and basically said, if you follow me and my commandments and do the things that I have shown to you, you will be saved from that torment that this rich man has fallen into, who was so unmerciful that he did not even bother to give the crumbs from his table to Lazarus. Also, elsewhere in the Gospel it says that unmercifulness, no matter how good you are spiritually, a big theologian or anything like that, if you show no mercy to others, you will have no mercy shown to yourself. Because that mercy is a godlike quality which gives people that opportunity to pick up and fix themselves up whenever they've gone wrong. And God is great at that. That's what He wants more than anything else. That's why He continues to show mercy even to the most hardened ones so that they may be able to come to their senses, fix themselves up and lead a, some sort of righteous life as best as they can. These are the sort of things out of this one reading that we can glean and if you are um, wise, you would even find out what the Holy Fathers have said about this particular passage because it's bound up with <coughs> resurrection, it's bound up with Saint Lazarus himself, the one that we celebrated last week, who was dead for four days and was resurrected. So there we are. We have all these things in the world. We have witnesses to that, the numerous miracles and all these things where God has appeared. And yet still, the world rejects it all. Well, in the end, it's going to be rejecting it to such a point where there is going to be nothing else left but to basically destroy the world as it is now. And as our Lord Jesus Christ said, to make a new heaven and a new earth where man will be refashioned according to the way that they were originally made and not evolved and lost that image of godliness on account of not repenting of their sins. We in this um, 21st century have to realise these things in our life and be ready to sort of answer those who say to us, I don't believe, I don't believe for this and this reason. Okay, well, what do you believe in? I believe in the Liberal Party. Well, show me where the Liberal Party has made heaven on earth. You know, it's been going for centuries, it's got a history written. Show me where it's done good things, where people have become great on earth on account of some party. And they can't show you that. All they can show you is fights and um, economic mismanagements and all sorts of things. And yet they still stick to that. Be careful in your own life that your belief system is firmly hung on that which matters for eternity and not on to passing things. Hang your belief system on that which is going to serve you both in this world and in the life to come. And through that, you will obtain salvation. And maybe also inspire others, those who are in a country like Australia, where there is very few true Christians, perhaps they will be inspired to say, well, you believe so firmly in Christ, there must be something there. I'm going to look into this, and maybe through that, you'll be able to bring others to the faith. Let us say with our whole soul, with our whole mind.